Namaste, I'm Dr. Robert. And today on 5-ish Minutes with Dr. Robert, my subject is Good Ways to Encourage You to Have a Sound Sleep. Sleep is extremely important. Sleep is one of the three pillars of life, food, sleep, and sex. And that means that you need to have a good sleep if you want to have good health and therefore a good life. Unfortunately, a vast number of a way big majority of the people in the United States are chronically sleep deprived. This has well established and well documented negative effects on your physical body and this is something that you do not want to have if you want to live into a healthy and um, relatively disease-free older life. So the first thing that you need to do is to recognize that going into sleep is a process and everything happens things should not be happening in your life in sudden in a sudden jerky kind of fashion they should be happening in a nice continuous sort of way so before you start to go to sleep, before you even think about going to bed at least for the last half hour you should be disconnecting yourself from all of your devices you should be moving into a direction where there is less light around you. You should be, all of the sensory inputs should be dwindling. You should be caught move, you should be taking the volume on all of those sensory inputs down. Don't even start applying some impressive and powerful and penetrating aromatherapy at that time. Even though aromatherapy is good for promoting the earth element and can be very handy for encouraging sleep, especially if you apply it to your feet. If it is strong and novel, new to you, it may cause all kinds of, of, of mental connections to be made and it might activate your mind even more than it is calming down your body. So no new, no strong sensory uh, uh, inputs for at least the last half hour you, before you go to bed. Do not eat before at least three hours before you go to bed. Let there be at least a three-hour gap so that all of the initial functions of digestion have occurred and so that your body is calming down and it doesn't feel like it needs to be doing work while it's trying to go to sleep. Your room needs to be as dark as possible. The darker it is, the better it will be because in the past, meaning not that long ago, even just 150 years ago or so, you, there was no way except to use a candle or if you were really rich, a whole candelabra of candles. Uh, there was no real way to have a bright night. Now we have the problem of trying to find darkness. Use blackout curtains if you need to. Use eye shades if you need to. It should be as dark as possible. If there is traffic noise, you can always use earplugs. A, a, a less annoying kind of way is to use a white noise generator. Something, though, that is not going to allow noises that are potentially identifiable by your ear to get to your ear and therefore cause your awareness to be drawn back into the external world. So sound and light in particular uh, you, uh, it, is, it is not at all a bad idea to use an aromatherapy generator somewhere not too near the bed, but that has something very calming in it, like lavender or chamomile or whatever it might be. Something very calming in a very low concentration, so that's encouraging that um, uh, 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 earth element kind of effect. Massaging your feet, the bottoms of your feet with a little bit of oil, that's a very valuable and useful kind of thing to do. Um, and uh, doing a little bit of very gentle self-massage, you don't even need uh, a, to apply oil, which is good because the other way you don't want to ruin your sheets, but just doing a little bit of self-massage to kind of calm down the surface of your skin. That's the vata is the most predominant dosha when it comes to the sense of touch, calm down the surface of your skin and allow your awareness to sink down into your skin. And then when you lie down to go to sleep, start from your feet and work up to your head and just sort of imagining your feet 
dissolving into the universe. And then imagine your legs dissolving and your knees dissolving and your, and your hip and your thighs and your hips and your, and your abdomen and your chest, your torso and your arms and your hands and your wrists and your elbows and your shoulders. But don't try to imagine your head dissolving because your head is not going to let itself dissolve because your head has a different opinion about things. Instead, imagine your head sinking down into your chest, which is already dissolved, and then the head will not be able to remember what it was supposed to be doing, and then it will be easier to go to sleep. So, if you are fortunate, like me, to be able to fall asleep almost anywhere, that's great. If you're not so fortunate as to be able to do that, then you need to be actively putting yourself into a pattern that is going to make it so that when you lie down, you have the pre-existing uh, surrounding stimuli that are going to encourage you to want to go to sleep. You want to make that second nature. Therefore, in the bed, do not watch TV, do not read. At the very most, it, you might engage in some sort of romantic activity, but otherwise, you need to be as calm as possible in the bed, and then you can go to sleep. This is Dr. Robert wishing everyone happy dreams.